Today's redstone video may be totally impossible, but I'm willing to give it a go. What I want to try and do is create a redstone door that doesn't have any pistons. This could be challenging. So let's have a think. If I was to put shulker boxes inside each one of these dispensers here and then hit this button, okay, that would give us half of a door, kind of. I mean, it's now, it's now in the process of closing up, and then if we do this, then we get the other half of the door. I mean, <laughs> we can only open the top two, but obviously there'd be blocks on top of them. So it is, it is essentially a door, but how would we break them? I don't think there's any way that I can think of to break them. I'm assuming if we put something like water on the inside of this, it's not going to pop off the shulker box, is it? No. <laughs> um, hmm, okay. Now I wonder, what is the blast resistance of something like a shulker box? Uh, if we grab ourselves a flint and steel, what, I, what I'd like to see... I mean, it blew up everything, so it's not the best of starts. What about if it's over here? Is that too far away? Yeah, it is. And I think this could be close enough to actually affect the dispensers. Let's, let's have a look. That's mildly promising. So if we had, let's say we had two bits of TNT here and then had some form of redstone activation for it. So the TNT, well, it would, I, I, I'm, sh I'm assuming it would probably drop down from the ceiling. If we did something like this, it's twice as powerful. No, it got rid of a dispenser. I really can't tell if I'm going down the right track here. I mean, I've had, I've had two successful tests now. That is the third. Am I... Could I be onto something? Or am I just getting really, really lucky? So we have shulker boxes, we have shulker boxes there, and then if we replace the TNT and give this another go... That's four successful tries. I think I'm going to do 20, and if all of them are successful, then we're on to something. Now, I'm just saying, I've done 15 so far, and all of them have been totally fine. So we could actually be on to something here. I'm quite excited about this because I kind of wasn't expecting this to work. I was expecting to have to do something completely different. However, yeah, that one looked like it was gonna be rough, and it's left a shulker box behind. No. Oh, it's only getting worse. Okay, going back to the drawing board then. I've come up with a plan, I've come up with a plan, and I think it's a bit of a good one. The only issue is I need to find myself a snow biome. Does anyone know where I can find one of those? I can't see one at the minute. And by the way, I'm sure by just me saying that, I've kind of given away what my thoughts are. But anyway, this is looking promising. I have everything crossed that can be crossed right now. Okay, so we have the water. Now we wait and see if it's going to turn to ice. And you know what, I might actually speed things up a little bit. If we go, I guess all the way down to the bottom here and do random tick speed and set it to 1000. That's not looking so good. <laughs> That's not looking so good. It's not turning into ice. If I was to place some water down here, does that turn into ice? I mean, to be fair, it doesn't seem to be turning into ice over here either. How do you make ice? Good news, we got some ice forming. The bad news is, is that this water down here is never going to turn into ice because this ice on top has generated on top of it and this needs direct sunlight to be able to turn into ice, which means that we're gonna have to stagger our door. Now I am just going to warn you, if you do plan on building this thing, just be aware that it is going to be the slowest door in the world to close. It seems to take ages for any form of ice to form. Uh, and apparently random tick speed doesn't seem to be affecting it, because if I crank the random tick speed up to 100,000, we're still not getting any ice. <laughs> 
I don't know what to say. Well, anyway, my idea was was that we would turn on a light that would melt the ice, the dispensers would then pick up the water, opening up the door, and then when we wanted to close, obviously the redstone lamp would turn off, the dispensers would redispense, and then the ice would freeze, but it has taken 25 minutes for us to even get one piece of ice in the door. So, I don't think that's gonna work. But, I'm not one to be defeated, so we are back in the original testing world, and I'm going to try out a new design which doesn't involve any ice or any shulker boxes or anything like that. Fingers crossed this one actually works. And go! Nice! Okay, that's, ext that's extremely good, and then hasn't got so good, but I think that's a good start. Things are a little bit new and improved now with the extra addition of this thing, which should hopefully help things out. So now it just flows down like this, and we don't actually get very much mess. If we now remove this button, or remove the water I should say, then we have got ourselves a cobblestone wall completely formed. And then if we remove the lava, we can dismantle this cobblestone wall. Well, you guessed it, we're gonna be using TNT. Now how well does this work, and does it destroy everything? Yeah, no, that's gonna destroy everything. How? Look how close that TNT is. What was I thinking? Right, this should be a tiny bit better. So it shouldn't destroy anything, but it should gradually explode our door. Now, how many pieces of TNT are we actually going to need? And that still blew off that button, so that just shows you how powerful TNT is. But it seems like two does the trick. I think maybe we'll throw in three just for good measure. Anyway, now that we have some of the logistics worked out, I think it's time to actually start work on some of the redstone. So I suppose... We have redstone dust which is going to be powering this thing, we're going to need some form of pulse extender setup, and we're going to need some way to activate this thing that doesn't get blown up by TNT. So I guess a lever that is placed very far away from the door. So let's see, how long does our lava need to be dispensed for? So we flick the lever, and we've got a pretty meaty pulse extender up at the top here, and that's hopefully going to give us enough time. So let's see, it's going down to the bottom. And then if we dispense the water now, I'd say that's perfect timing. Yeah, we should be able to do that, and then everything will clear out. I've now hooked up the meaty pulse extender to a falling edge monostable circuit, so the water should flow down as the lava stops being dispensed. So let's see if that actually functions in the system. Ah, uh, that looks way too early to me, but thankfully there wasn't actually anything in the dispensers. <laughs> I think waiting for that ice to freeze is just, yeah, it's, it's kind of frozen my brain a little bit. 17th time the charm, I think is the saying. How is it still too, it's still too early, but it's not. I thought that was going to be too early, but that's actually perfectly timed. So as you can see, we actually only have cobblestone in the door. That is amazing. That's like spot on. I couldn't have done that better if I tried. Okay, so that is part one done. We have got the closing in place. Now here comes the fun part. Just the TNT. So we are going to need some form of falling edge monostable circuit coming off of this redstone torch right here. And then I guess... Uh, well, I guess we run that straight out into one set of TNT. So that'll be the first set fired. And then I don't know, do I need to do anything smart? Do I need to do anything smart with this one? Or can it quite simply be two firings of TNT? I guess we could use a pulse extender and then have a dual edge. Yeah, I think that's probably the way to go for most compactness, so let's do a bit of that. I've just realized without without even noticing, I've actually used the piston, so before I do anything, I think we need to get rid of that one. Backups have been made and pistons have been replaced. Let's try out the TNT part of the mechanism. That looks too close. Oh yeah, it was too close. It was definitely too close. I thought it'd be good to just try out some extra fortification to see if that does the trick, so I've covered up the chamber with obsidian and I've also changed up some of the redstone with obsidian. And that does seem to make a difference. So there we go. Our piston door is now open. We have just opened it up. All of the redstone is completely safe. If we flick this lever once again, you can see that gradually the piston door will close. Now, I don't, I don't really want to be under this thing as it happens, but you can see that the lava has just been retracted. Then we're going to get the water flowing down eventually. And that is going to come into contact with our lava at perfect timing to allow this thing to fully lock up. And then when we want to open the door once again, all we have to do is flick this lever here. And there is the sound of the TNT. There is the explosion of the TNT. And as you can see, 
this thing is working perfectly. <laughs> we have got, ladies and gentlemen, a pistonless redstone door. Oh, hang on, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess this this works too. I guess you don't have to spend me like multiple hours trying to come up with ways to do it. You could just just do that. Uh, pistonless. There you go. Pistonless redstone door. <sighs> And on that note, I think it's time to end. I, I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you later.